very much. Thank you, thank you. So here at Mahindra Electric's production facility, there are about 220 skilled employees whose job it is to make the Trio electric vehicle as well as the E20 Plus, Mahindra's four seat, four door electric hatchback. This facility is based in Bangalore or Bengaluru as the locals like to call it, which is an Indian city in the south with a population of around 12.34 million people, or if you prefer the Indian numbering system, 1.23 crore. Most of this production line is completely manually operated, but that doesn't stop it churning out a very high number of electric vehicles. In a good month, this facility can churn out 12,000 electric vehicles. That's made up of Mahindra Trios as well as Mahindra E20 Pluses. So I guess there's nothing else for us to do but to see how India's number one electric vehicle manufacturer makes India's number one electric vehicles. Now, before we talk about building electric cars, we should probably talk about the building that we're in because it's kind of special. In 2012, it was awarded a platinum award by the IGBC, that's the Indian Green Building Council, for its energy saving features. There's no air conditioning in this building because it doesn't need to be. It's big enough. The convection currents are set up in the building. And even though it's 35 degrees C outside, it's still moderately comfortable within this building. I'm now at the start of the production line for both the E20 Plus and the Trio. The chassis themselves are made elsewhere by a local supplier. They're powder coated and welded together and they arrive on these crates behind me. This is the E20 Plus's chassis and just up in front of me is the Trio's chassis. It seems fitting somewhat that the motor is the first thing to get installed in both of these electric vehicles. With the motors now fitted, the vehicles are lowered onto these little dollies that make their way around the factory. They're hand carts, they're pushed by the workers, and I should point out here that the majority of the Mahindra production facility is completely manual. There's no robots, there's no computerized carts pushing the cars around playing a little tune as they go. Each vehicle also gets one of these. It's essentially a dossier that follows the car through the production facility. Every person to work on this vehicle initials at the relevant point in the file. All of the inspectors also sign it as the vehicle goes through. And it provides accountability to make sure that every Trio and every E20 Plus that rolls off the production line here at Mahindra Electric meets the company's tough quality control standards. As we make our way down through the production line, we start to notice that this production line is in fact capable of supporting both the three and four wheeled vehicle on the same production line. So the Trio, which is what this is, is a three wheeler. And a little bit further down the production line, we have an E20 Plus. It's a four wheeler. They both go on the same production line because the carts are capable of handling both. Here we see the first power electronic components being installed. Without them, the motor can't function. And we see the controller circuitry being installed as well as a little later on the telematics. This E20 Plus has also just had its air compressor pump fitted as well as its washer fluid. And in the back here, you'll see most of the power electronics that this car needs to operate, as well as a 12 volt battery that powers the telematic system. Yeah, you heard me. Every single Mahindra electric vehicle has a very sophisticated onboard telematic system that allows fleet operators, individual owners and rideshare services to know exactly what's going on with their vehicle or vehicles at any point in a given day. You can remote start stop charging. If the car has air conditioning, as in the case of the E20 Plus, you can turn that on. You can even unlock it if it has doors, which the Trio doesn't. With the power electronics installed, we're now at a point where we're starting to see the battery packs being installed. And here, a Trio is getting its battery pack. The battery pack sits underneath where the driver's seat would be in both vehicles. The battery packs themselves are lithium ion battery packs. They've been developed over the last 10 years. Mahindra Electric's been making electric vehicles commercially for that period of time. And it gives it some of the highest data acquired across the entire electric vehicle industry. By now, we're starting to see some of the ducting and control systems going in. Brakes have already been added at this point, brake pedals, 
And final wiring is taking place for the power electronics and telematics system. Now this station is super important because the next station turns on those systems for the very first time. It's at this point that engineers hook up a computer to the car's onboard diagnostic port. This enables them to talk to the car's battery management system, the controller, and also the telematic system to make sure that they're all functioning correctly and they've all been programmed correctly with a vehicle identification number, which is added earlier on in the production process. We are just about halfway through the production process, but at this point, the vehicle split off in different directions despite being made on the same production line. That's because the Trio is relatively simple in its construction and it doesn't have air conditioning and some of the features that you would normally get in a regular car. That's because it's not a car, it's an auto. So it carries on down that way in the production line. The Trio pluses, meanwhile, they come off here and they get a few extra bits added. They get the air conditioning system added, which is right here. And they also get their molded exterior body panels bonded to the chassis. This is about halfway through the production process, but it's pretty much mechanically and electrically finished. It's just waiting for its interior. It's got its exterior body panels, which have been bonded to the chassis. There's been seam sealer put in to ensure that there's no water ingress into the chassis. Everything is sealed up from a mechanical point of view. Everything is tightened up. The power electronics are on and active. We just need to add all of the things that you'd expect in a car, you know, like seats and seat belts and doors and windows. That's next. By now, these vehicles should look like the vehicles that they're going to turn out to be. The Trio is very unmistakable with its single wheel up front and the E20 Plus. Looks like any other car that's nearing the end of the production process. As we make our way up the production line, we see things like lights added, dashboards, telematics, infotainment systems, which are different to the telematics and the power electronics. These are the things that allow you to interact with the car from the driver's seat. The rear tailgates are added, the charge port doors are added. They can either have one charge door if the car just has AC charging, or if it has rapid charging on the other side of the vehicle, they add a rapid charge port. Interestingly, the E20 Plus tends to only get rapid charging if it's a fleet vehicle. Private buyers tend not to get it. Here we see the seats being added, the doors, the windows, and the seat belts. And at this point, if you just looked inside, you just think this was a car awaiting delivery. By now, you'll start to notice these little tags appearing on the vehicles. This shows that they've passed quality control thus far. In terms of the production line for the Trio, you start to see the front and rear passenger seats being added, the driver's seat being added, and all of the exterior bodywork that has up to this point not been installed on the vehicle. As we near the end of the production line process, we start to see the steering wheel installed, the handlebars installed on the Trio, and at the very last station, the car is hoisted into the air and given the one thing it hasn't had to this point, wheels. And then it's ready to go on to being tested. From this point onwards, it's just like any other production line. The cars undergo testing. Here you see the trio on the dynamometer where it's undergoing brake testing to make sure that the brakes operate as they should. Here we see the alignment rig and the vehicles get their first charge. Without that, they wouldn't really be electric vehicles now, would they? As you've seen to this point, everything's been quite manual for a, an automotive production facility, but that's okay. The people who work here, there's around 220, are highly skilled engineers who've received special training on each of their stations. But as we come out of the production process, you start to see a little more digital testing coming in. This behind me is a shower booth to make sure that the vehicles are watertight. After all, this is India and they have the monsoon season. The final step in the entire production process is actually an inspection process. This is the customer inspection area. It's where the vehicles undergo their final testing to make sure they're ready to go into customer hands. These special lights behind me are all intended to ensure that any defects in bodywork show up immediately and the trained inspectors go over every inch of these vehicles to make sure they're 100% ready for the real world.